there are exactly five solids that are composed of identical regular polygons, the platonic solids. But a large number of polyhedrons is possible if one allows irregular but still identical polygons. This results in the 13 Catalan solids, for example. But there is an infinite number of polyhedrons with this property, like the symmetrical double pyramids. These are therefore not counted among the Catalan solids. Likewise, the twisted double pyramids. These are called trapezohedrons. Recently I came across a pentagonal trapezohedron as a ten-sided dice, and I noticed some geometric features that made the thing special. I wanted to make one out of wood, but first I had to understand what was important. Pentagonal trapezohedrons can vary in height. One can imagine tall and slender ones, but also flat ones. Almost all of these trapezohedrons do not have a circumsphere, that's a sphere on which all corners of the solid would lie. But there is always exactly one where the height is chosen in such a way that it has a circumsphere. Exactly this special case I found interesting, especially the views from different angles. Looking from the top, it's like any pentagonal trapezohedron. The outline is a regular decagon. But from another angle, the outline is a rectangle. This is due to the circumsphere, because the corners of the rectangle are formed by four corners of the trapezohedron. In the general case, without a circumsphere, it would only be a parallelogram. If you turn it further, you can even see a square as an outline. That surprised me in particular. At the same time, this allows a nice trick to saw this thing out of foot, as you will see in a moment. To better understand why this square outline is visible, we number the sides. One side face is always at a right angle to the next but one. So here are number 2 and number 5 to the right and to the left of number 1, and we look along their line of intersection. On the opposite side, it's the same because of symmetry. And because you see the same edges everywhere, namely the long edges of the faces in true size, it is a square. But why are surfaces 2 and 5 perpendicular to each other? Because of the edge drawn in red here and the diagonal drawn in green here are perpendicular to each other. They are the sides of the rectangle I described before. And there is a less spectacular but afterwards very helpful view. In this case we look vertically at one of the side faces and an elongated hexagon is created. Here we see the side face undistorted and notice two right angles. The long sides of the side face number 1, marked with A here, are at right angles to the side faces 3 and 4, which are exactly in the viewing direction here. So this outline is formed by two pairs of parallel planes. The distance in between is exactly A. And parallel planes are really practical when sawing. So we can take a square section piece of wood and saw at the correct angle several times. But what is the correct angle? All this may seem difficult to imagine, but easy to calculate. Unfortunately, the angle calculation is anything but simple. I did many futile calculations and was about to give up. However, using the characteristic right angles and a general approach to pentagons, I finally found that the angle had to be 38 degrees. A mitre saw is all you need here. I first tried to make a small prototype to see how I have to turn the workpiece properly. 
It went quite well, so I took a bigger block of ash. First cut, then turn it 90 degrees. Second cut, right on the corner. Now marking the length A, that's the square cross section of 7.5 cm here from the last saw cut. Then comes the third cut, but only in the front half of the workpiece, so that the trapezohedron won't fall off. Twist again and make a fourth cut. Now we have already cut out eight of the final surfaces. Only the protruding parts here have to be cut off. To do this you have to place the block on one of the surfaces you have just sawed, because these surfaces must each be at right angles to the new socket, but of course again with a 38 degrees mitre angle. Here you have to hold the workpiece properly, but this works well because the rear surface also lies flat against the fence. With a bit of sanding, the polyhedron was finished. In the end, it was exactly the shape I wanted, with all the features described earlier.